Good afternoon. Just about an hour and 15 minutes ago, a Harris County grand jury handed down indictments against former HPD officers Gerald Goins and Stephen Bryant. These indictments are for felony murder and tampering with government document against Mr. Goins, and they are for tampering with the government document against Stephen Bryant, virtually the same charges that were directly filed last August. With these indictments, our Houston community and members of our community uh, agreed with the decision that we made in charging these officers by finding that probable cause existed to believe that these officers had committed these offenses. The, uh, the offenses center around the Harding Street botched raid uh, in which Regina Nicholas and Dennis Tuttle were gunned down in their own home. <clears throat> Our charge is to find justice for these victims and all the people of Harris County whose trust has been betrayed by these officers. Our police officers who are in uniform should not be besmirched. The good work that they do, the lives that they put on their line each day should not be besmirched by corrupt police officers. Corruption eats at the fabric of our society, and it is destructive to our democracy. It is my charge as your elected DA to ensure that police corruption and those who practice it are held accountable by the people of Harris County. In this case, because officers lied, people died. And now our community demands the truth. This concludes the first phase of our investigation. I think the public needs to know, as we inform the first grand jury, that they are likely the first of three consecutive grand juries that will hear the phases of our investigation. First, we took care of business with the officers that we know caused this crime. But we also have issue and are looking at others. And phase two will be a review before the grand jury of additional officers and perhaps additional charges against these same officers. Phase three will be an investigation into the shooting itself and the other members of the squad who were in what they called the stack. When the home was entered, the door was breached, and the family killed. We want the public to be assured, along with the family of Regina Nicholas and Dennis Tuttle, that this operation is in full swing at the district attorney's office. While we have only 357 attorneys, we have nearly two dozen staffers who are working on these cases almost full time. Not all full time because the, uh, their job duties are replete, but I want to thank, first of all, the members of my civil rights division, led by attorney Natasha Sinclair. I want to thank you for the incredible work and leadership of this team, along with the other people who lead this office with me. I want to thank everyone for the attention to detail, uh, the excruciating uh, uh, size and demand of this investigation that is put on our workforce and for your absolute commitment and passion to get to the bottom of this and change this type of police behavior. I've been asked if this investigation will change the way narcotics investigations and prosecution are handled. I cannot speak for law enforcement, but I can speak for how we prosecute. And I will tell you that we've learned much in these cases. We saw uh, the other day in the case of Otis Mallet a man who was sentenced to two years in the penitentiary based on the testimony of Officer Goins. That case occurred back in 2008. We have a lot to look at, and I want the public to know we're headed in the right direction. We will get there. Have patience. Justice knows no timetable, and we are absolutely committed to seeing it through for 
Regina and Nicholas, for Dennis Tuttle, and for any other individual who might have been the victim of police corruption. Questions? It's both, Mario. We are looking at the involvement of everyone in the squad. Each officer on that squad, including those seriously injured, understand that they are under a prosecutorial microscope. People died in this case, and they died as a result of Officer Goins' lies to a magistrate and also, well, to a municipal judge, and also uh, his reliance uh, and, and the lies that Stephen Bryant told. But we are looking at all of those officers. Additionally, as we've done media and press on this event, others have contacted our office, potential victims, people who uh, may have been robbed or perhaps shorted on their uh, informant money. Uh, there's been a variety of uh, different information that's come to the office, some of it through the media. So in addition to thanking my leadership uh, in the Civil Rights Division, I want to thank the public for being responsive. If anyone out there is a victim or has information about somebody else who may have been harmed by Officer Goins or any other uh, person associated with this investigation, please contact the District Attorney's Office, our Civil Rights Division. We've had cases come in through our Ritz Division. We've seen trial prosecutors raise questions. And you've seen cases dismissed. And you uh, have seen Mr. Mallet in the case of a writ. Uh, we've agreed to relief. So we are listening. We will investigate. And we will get to the bottom of your case. So keep those calls if you were a victim coming in. When you say we're looking at every officer in that squad, are you also referring to squad leadership? Sure. Can you say how many total officers are in this? Well, squad 15. Uh, we're looking at the members of that. I don't think that's any surprise to them or the chief. I think they're looking at them. There are 11 officers in squad 15. Okay, how about beyond that, though? Not every complaint has related to squad 15. There have been complaints about others that have come to us. Those are being looked at as well. Sinjin, you asked me specifically about one that you've written about. Can you tell me his name again? Marcos Gatorian. Yeah. There is another case uh, that Chronicle reported. We've looked at the information, and we are investigating that case. Thank you for asking. Grand juries typically uh, meet for about three months each. And so this uh, grand jury started looking at this case in November. And they concluded that uh, section of the investigation today. So this grand jury will end at the end of the month. There will be a week or so break. And then in three-month increments, you can expect the second phase. And then following that, consecutive to that, the third phase. Well, they're looking for evidence of deception, inconsistent statements, records that don't match up, and of course, we're interviewing witnesses. Can you give us a sense of how many uh, people have contacted your office with complaints? I mean, this is, uh, I mean, there have only been four or five post-conviction risk files. Right. But, you know, you're talking about a body of 14,000 cases. Well, the information has come to us in different ways, and I would say it's under a dozen right now. But we're open to other calls. We know that there may be other people with claims. Again, not everybody who has a claim is credible. Not every claim is credible, but we are willing to look into it. That's what our Conviction Integrity Division is for. RITS is to provide people who've already been convicted when they're entitled to it relief. And of course, the Civil Rights Division is here to improve uh, the behavior of any police officer who might violate an individual's civil rights. The whole point of prosecution is to change behavior, protect our community. 
And when we have corruption in something as important as law enforcement, the group that we rely upon to protect us, uh, it's a priority for us. Again, I really want to tell law enforcement in this community that we know you risk your lives. We know how much you and your family sacrifice. And we believe that officers who lie and commit crimes do you as much injustice as they do the community. And so the purpose of this, of getting to the truth and an investigation of this size, is to ensure that a few bad apples don't ruin the whole batch. Our community's trust depends on it. I think our democracy depends on the assurance that we have fair courts, authentic evidence, and witnesses who are truthful. Yes, but they had options, Mario. Our lawyers present every possible crime uh, that could have, that this could be, to the grand jury. These are the uh, these are the offenses that our community members serving on the grand jury selected. I also want to say we have a hard time getting grand jurors down here. We have a hard time getting people to show up to jury service. It is the most important thing you can do for your community. People who say they are activists who want to change and reform criminal justice, we challenge you to serve. Answer those jury summons, please. So, can I do this? I'd like to finish this, wrap this, because we got uh, Ruben Perez, uh, chief of our sp special crimes division, is going to do it in Spanish. And if we could then reserve the questions about the Bel Air uh, homicide for the end, I'll be happy to answer your questions. Okay. All right, other questions? Remind me that you both have to bring themselves in again and go through the court process like they did in August, or is that covered? Well, as this community knows, Mr. Goins and Mr. Bryan are both on bond. Uh, they are on uh, both federal bond and they are uh, on state bail. So uh, there will be, of course, more court hearings and presentations, and their appearances are not waived, but there will not be additional bail requested. Okay. Thank you. Yes, please. Thank you. Ruben? Okay. Thank you, Ruben. <clears throat> 